Good morning, everyone. My name is Sarah Hunstead. I am a pediatric nurse, mum of two, and founder of CPR Kids. And today we are talking about what to do if your child sticks something up their nose or in their ear or somewhere on themselves that they really shouldn't put something because let's face it, kids do this all the time. It's like they have this wiring that just goes, hmm, here's a pee. That would be really good to stick that up my nose or in my ear to save that for later. And as a pediatric nurse, believe me, I have seen everything shoved into everywhere when it comes to kids. So I'm going to talk you through what to do, particularly if your child pops something in their nose or their ear or in their genital region, because that is another place that is quite common. What I would love you to do before we get into this is please Give me a thumbs up, a wave now that we're live, just so I can make sure that everything is working as it should technology wise. And I would love you to tag anyone in the comments below who you think will benefit from this information. Because basically, if you've got kids or you care for kids at some stage, they're going to shove something somewhere that they shouldn't. They just will. So I actually named my book after my daughter shoving a pee up a nose. So um, I wrote A Life of Finger, A Pee Up a Nose, A Practical Guide to Baby and Child First Aid. Why? Because she shoved that pee up her nose. So I'm going to tell you about what I did. I'm going to tell you about what not to do as well, because really when it comes to kids, we've got one chance really to get this out before they might become traumatized by that. And we don't want to do that. Okay. I will demonstrate on my friend Annie here, who I am twinning with today. Um, yep. Because, you know, whole CPR kids thing, you know. So I will show you what to do on her as well. And we will go into the mother's kiss. We have been requested so much over the past few weeks for us to demonstrate again what the mother's kiss method is. So I will demonstrate that. That is really good for getting foreign bodies out of noses. All right, let's start. First of all, stay calm, okay? If your child shoves something where they shouldn't, stay calm. Why do we need to actually get it out? Well, because it depends on where it is, but it can cause trauma um, for one. Infection is another. I looked after a little boy who um, in emergency who had come in and what he had been doing is mum had noticed this weird kind of discharge coming out of his nose and she thought, oh, it's, you know, it's okay. It's on. We'll watch it, keep track of it. She did. It got worse and worse. And then she noticed this horrendous stench coming out of his nose like oh yeah, gross gp sent him into ed because the gp looked up the nose and noticed that there was all this stuff in there he's like i don't know what that is turned out what this child had been doing so we ended up suctioning a whole lot of stuff out of his nose like i am talking i did not know a kid could put that much stuff up there what this child had been doing was picking the phone off the bottom of his car seat, so just kind of the, the liner part underneath his phone, picking up the phone and sticking it up his nose. Been doing it for weeks. So, yeah, it, could, it was all festy and infected, gross. We need to get that out. And the other thing is, is why do we need to get other objects out? Um, you know, for example, they could end up inhaling them further, going down into the airway, um, causing obstruction. So that's why we actually do need to get them out. Now, what I do not want you to do, okay, no, 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 is try and use tweezers or, you know, I've had um, one person who tried to use a skewer to try and get something out of their kid's nose. Please don't do that. Why? Because when you consider the inside of the nose, the inside of the ears and so on, causing trauma is really easy to do and you don't want to do that you don't want to end up causing more trauma than what is possibly already there to your child okay so why because infection it, you know psychological trauma because it'll hurt to your kid so please don't do it all right now let's start with the ears if your child puts something in their ear okay, then what I would encourage, unless it's kind of half poking out and you can easily just use your fingers and go, yep, well, all done. Okay, great. 
that's not usually how it happens though okay so uh, in saying that i have had my child put half a leaf in her ear and i could easily just pull the leaf out lucky that was good but most of the time it's things like popcorn or play-doh or beads or peas you know think of anything that's small they will pop that in there so if you try and use tweezers, things like that, even if you're holding your child down and they move, you're going to do damage to the ear canal and we don't want that to happen. So if your child sticks something in their ear, that is a trip to the doctors. So if you have a good GP, um, then off to the GP. Um, if this is, isn't something that your GP feels comfortable to do, then it's off to the emergency department. Okay. The reason why I say don't try and get it out yourself first is because generally if you hurt your child, if they get held down, they're going to be scared and then we're not going to be able to do what we need to do in the hospital. Okay. So ways in the hospital that we may get that out, we may use special forceps, we might use suction. There are a few different things that we might do and we want to try and have your child as relaxed and calm as possible and that's really important. Okay. So the other thing is, is don't give them anything to eat or drink just in case we need to give them some laughing gas, so nitrous oxide to try and help them be relaxed while we get that out. Or if it's really deep in there, then they may have to go to operating theatres to have it removed and they'll need a general anaesthetic for that. And so that's why we don't want them to have anything to eat or drink, okay? So ears can be a bit tricky. So we encourage you, unless it's right there and you can easily grab it, leave it so that we can, you know, try and get that out in the hospital or your GP can have a go if that's something that they actually feel comfortable to do. Okay, we've talked about ears. Before we get onto the mother's kiss and the nose, because that's the most popular one, I just want to talk about genitals as well. So I have seen um, kids who have put, for example, I saw a little boy who put a piece of Lego into his foreskin, incredibly painful, don't try and remove that. Um, little girls will often put things in their vagina. Please don't worry. This is developmentally normal. Children are just exploring their bodies. It is okay, all right? We do need to try and teach them don't shove stuff in places that you shouldn't, but don't be angry at them. It is completely developmentally normal for them to, to be exploring their body, okay? So, what we don't want to do is cause any further trauma to the sensitive genital region. What I would like you to do is take your child um, to, once again, if a GP, I'm just thinking of rural areas and so on, that the GP may be your first port of call um, or off to uh, your nearest emergency department. And remember, nothing to eat or drink just in case they need some of that laughing gas or an operation to get that out, okay? So we've talked about that. Next, let's get on to the noses, the fun part, okay? So with the noses, first of all, you can try the blowing method if your child is able to blow their nose. Now, I had one child who just did not get the concept of blowing their nose until she was about three or possibly even four, probably a bit older. Every time I asked her to blow her nose, she would sniff, just didn't get the whole concept of, blowing out okay so um if you want some good tips on how to teach a child how to blow their nose go into our video section because we did a facebook live with dr deb levy recently and she had some great tips on how to teach a child to blow their nose so have a look at that one now so what are we doing we are first of all if your child can blow their nose what i want you to do is you can obstruct so block the nostril that does not have the bead or the pee or whatever it is in it. If they've shoved it up both nostrils, then don't do this. But say the pee is in this one, I'm going to block this one. I'm going to get them to take a big breath in through their mouth. So we get them to blow outwards. So we close their mouth when they after they've taken that big breath and sniff and blow often it'll be a whole lot of mucus if they're good at blowing their nose try that a few times see if it helps if it's not working then it might be a trip off to the hospital another thing that we can do which is particularly good when it comes to kids who can't blow their nose who don't have that concept where they just want to sniff backwards 
we can do the mother's kiss. And what I will do is I will put some references because remember everything that we talk about here at CPR Kids is evidence-based, okay? I will put some great references um, down in the comments below as well so you can do some reading about the safety of this um, because all the evidence does say that this is very safe and effective thing to do in children, okay? Otherwise, I wouldn't be showing you, all right? So I'm going to move my camera down so that you can see what I'm going to do on Annie here, and I'll show you the mother's kiss method. First of all, what we need to make sure that we do is um, that, it, remember, it might not work. This works particularly well when it's an object that's blocking off the whole nostril, for example, because we want that pressure of the blow of air that we're going to do to try and pop that object out. If, for example, it's a bead that has got a hole through the middle of it and it's positioned in a way that the air goes straight through, it may not help. OK, so remember, this works particularly well with objects that are um, uh, that are hard and uh, really do have um, the almost the whole nostril blocked. OK, here we go. Now, just move my microphone out of the way here and we have Annie here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to tilt Annie so you can see her a little bit better. Say Annie has got the P or whatever it is on this side. OK. I am going to block her other nostril, the clear nostril, with my thumb. I'm going to, first of all, before I did this, I explained to her what I was going to do because we always tell kids what we're going to do first. We always tell them the truth. And I'm going to tell, and part of it is I'm going to tell her, I'm going to give her a really big kiss. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. All right. I've got to say that. Always tell your kids what you're going to do. Don't lie to them because trust is important. All right, here we go. So blocking that free nostril. And you can do this sitting up. You can do it with them on your lap. I'm just doing this like this so that you can see well what I'm doing. That's all. Now with my mouth, I'm going to put a good seal over her mouth with my lips. And when I do my breath, I'm going to take a nice breath breath and I'm going to breathe until I feel a little bit of resistance okay and then I'm going to okay so I'll show you all right block that nostril my mouth over her mouth okay so you can see what I did then I blocked her nostril I put my mouth with a good seal over her mouth. And you can do this sitting up. You can do this any way they feel comfortable. I only did that for demonstration purposes. So, for example, um, blocking nostril again. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And hopefully that object has popped out of her nose. Okay, it probably is actually better to do this sitting up rather than lay them down. Because so I don't know about you, but if somebody was coming at me and I was laying there and you know I had something up my nose and I, like that would probably freak me out. So have your child whatever the position they feel comfortable in and you feel comfortable in. Okay, so hopefully that will come out with a torrent of snot. And yeah, and there we go. If not, you can try it a few times. It might have moved, it might dislodge. Often with a whole lot of mucus that's coming there, it might actually end up sliding out as well, which would be great. Um, but the important thing is, is that if it doesn't work, okay, then we're off to the hospital. Important thing to do, really important thing to do. So in summary, when it comes to the ears, unless you can easily just get that out like that, like that leaf that my child did, so which I was very easily able to get out, that's something that we need a medical professional to do because we can absolutely cause a lot of trauma to the ears. And you may have seen our post on Instagram yesterday as well about cotton buds. Please don't use them in your kids' ears, okay? All your ears, don't put anything in your ears. It's smaller than your elbow, basically, okay? Unless it's prescribed eardrops, then you can, all right? <laughs> So there we go. We talked about the ears. We talked about the genitals, that that is something that you please don't be cranky a child. It is developing, developmentally normal for them to explore their body. That is something that we definitely need a medical professional to have a look at to remove. And last but not least, the nose. When kids shove things up their noses, if they can blow their nose effectively, 
we can use the blowing method, which is blocking the nostril that does not have anything in it, so the clear nostril, and getting them to take a breath in and that nice big blow if they are able to do it, okay? If they can't, then we can try the mother's kiss method as well, which is what I just explained to you, that we block the nostril that is clear. Good seal your mouth over their mouth. Breathe out of your mouth into them until you feel a little bit of resistance and then a okay? So like this. And hopefully it has come out with a torrent of snot, with a bit of luck. And remember, if in doubt, please seek medical help. It's really, really important, okay? So please share this with anybody who you think needs to know. I will put in the comments below um, some references for you so you can read about the safety and, eff and efficacy of these methods. And I will see you tomorrow. If you join um, me again tomorrow at 10 a.m., Dr. Deb Levy and I will be doing another Facebook Live on a paediatric health subject, and I'd love to see you there. So please share this far and wide, everyone, because the more people who know how to do this good evidence-based stuff for their kids, the better. I'll see you later. Okay, bye, everyone.